Welcome to the next video on SQL Lite. In this video, I'll describe how to use foreign keys, that's database foreign keys with SQL Lite. So the first question is why, what are they and why use them? Well, let's start with an application. So I'll go SQL Lite 3 fk.db, that's for foreign keys. Now, the first thing you have to do in SQL Lite, you actually have to enable foreign keys and you just do that by going pragma foreign keys equals on. Okay, then I create a table of colors. And I'll have a name, that's a string, and I'll make it unique. It has to be unique for foreign keys to work. All right, so then I'll insert a few values into the table. Oops. Go. So I'll insert into the colors I'll put red, I'll put green, and I'll put blue. So if I look from at the tables, oh sorry, at the colors, I have red, green, and blue. Now I'm going to create a table called cars. And basically I'll just um, put in create table cars. And I'll have a model, a year, and a color. And that's what you do in a typical application. And then maybe you'll go something like uh, insert into cars, and you'll say insert a VW bug that's blue. And you may want to then say insert a um, Toyota Sienna that is uh, some other color. Oops. Uh, red just for argument's sake. Now the problem with this approach is is that you only want colors in the cars table whoops you only want values in the cars table that are also in the colors table for various reasons. Um, you don't want just people putting, you know, random colors in willy-nilly because you may have other parts of your application or other applications that depend on you knowing exactly which colors are in your inventory. So to insert something in the table, you probably have to do something like this. You select, let's say you want to put in a new red car. So you say select count st oops, star from colors where name equals red and you say okay I have this shows clearly that I have one entry for red you know if I did this for black I'd have zero so you can't add any black cars to your cars table you actually have to have only red cars or uh, green cars or blue cars and then after that you just go you know uh, something like insert into cars um, you know, say a Toyota Supra 1987, it's red. Now, um, the, this is not an unreasonable thing to do in your code. The problem is that somebody has to remember that the colors table is related to the cars table. Um, and, and it's not always obvious. The problem that happens is over time you accumulate more and more data. And eventually somebody will say, hey, we got this, we got this ton of data. Let's build an application that can, uh, that can do something else with the data. So a new person may look at the database schema as they're writing the new application and not realize there's a relationship intended between the cars and the colors. He may then start adding cars with colors not, that are not in the colors table. The new data could then break a third application that depends on colors of the cars being in the colors table. This is very, very bad. It causes horrible errors. And the way around this is to create a table with a foreign key. And here's how we go. You go create table. I'll call it new cars. So again, model string year, oops, integer, color string. And then you say references colors, that's the 
That's the colors table, and it references the name field in the colors table. Okay, so you'll see now that the new cars table looks exactly like the cars table, except this color field it references colors that are in the colors table. All right, so now let's try. Let's say you got a new car. Somebody writes an application. They want to try to put in a new car. Let's put in a Chartreuse Nissan Altima. Bang, it says error, constraint failed. That's right, there's no Chartreuse. As you recall, there's only red, green, and blue. However, you could then insert the value Chartreuse into the table. Um, and now you'll see Chartreuse is in the table. And then you can in insert that Chartreuse car and it works. Right, now you have your Nissan Altima that's a Chartreuse. Now this data schema will ensure that any application that uses these tables can count on cars always having colors in the colors table. This in turn reduces the amount of code that an application designer has to write to check data because the data is always good. Furthermore, writers of independent applications all work from a common data definition. Another thing that happens is you cannot delete a row in the colors table that's referenced by another table. Let's try this out. Um, delete from colors where name equals chartreuse. Again, it's because somebody else is referring to chartreuse. Now, if you go select distinct color from new cars, chartreuse is the only entry in that table. So if we try to delete, let's say red, so delete from colors where name equals red, that works. Right, you see red is gone now. And that's because there are no cars or other tables, other rows in other tables referring to um, to a red. So that lets you uh, that lets you only delete stuff that is unreferenced. Now, um, another thing you can do with uh, foreign keys is that uh, you can also specify what to do if you delete a color. So for example, you may not want to just forbid uh, a color from being deleted or updated. Um, you may want to say, okay, if it's deleted, then delete all the rows. Or if it's updated, then update all the rows that refer to the color. So I'll give you an example. And I'll create the table again. Uh, you'll notice that uh, when you update, you cascade the change. So if you update the colors table, what this means is on update, is if you update the colors table, cascade the change back to the new cars table. If you delete a color in the colors table, then delete the row in new cars that refers to that color. So let's uh, insert some canned data. See if this works. Oh yeah. So uh, new cars. You'll notice that uh, there's a whole bunch of colors here. Now, let's say I want to change my fashionista has told me that there's no such thing as purple anymore. It's now um, um, mauve. So I'll go, so I'll say select star from colors and then update colors. Set name equals mauve uh, where name equals purple. Now you'll notice the color purple has been changed to mauve, but also You'll notice all the cars have also been, the ones that were purple, you'll notice from up here, have also been changed to mauve. So that's that's because the, whoops, the on, the on uh, delete clause is working. The, sorry, the on, uh, the on, ca the on update cascade clause. So whenever you change the color, every, every row that um, referred to it is uh, changed. Say I go delete, from colors where name equals mauve. So now what I'm going to do is delete 
the mauve color. Now, as I've said before, if you delete the mauve co any color, any row that refers to that color in the new cars table will also get deleted. Let's see what happens. So select from new cars. Whoops. You'll see all the mauve cars were deleted. So if you don't want, um, you know, data to be, um, so if you want deletes, if you want the data to be consistent, you either have to forbid the deletion of a, a referenced color, or you have to delete everything that refers to it. And either way, the data stays consistent. So you can, and, and same thing for updates. If you change a color, then anything that refers to that color can be updated. So you can specify what to do uh, if you don't want the default action to be deny or, or constraint filled. So that's how you use constraint, uh, foreign key constraints in SQLite.